instant later, I was engulfed in a wall of fire and burned over most of my body. From West Street, I watched the second plane hit the South Tower. At that moment, it was obvious it was another terrorist attack. I couldn't know then that a single unclassified list of names had been provided to the defense during the trials of the 1993 World Trade Center bombers and delivered promptly to Osama bin Laden, providing a piece of intelligence that may have eased the way, may ease the way to the attacks on 9-11. Now, Attorney General of U.S., Attorney General Eric Holder, decisions to bring Khalid Sheikh Mohammed to trial in New York's con, well, courts will launch a second round of terrorist trials posing the same security risk as it did eight years ago. I will let others debate the detailed and serious repercussions of Mr. Holder's unprecedented choice to grant constitutional rights to enemy combatants who, like Mr. Mohammed, are captured on the battlefield. My position is simple. Mr. Holder told Congress that if Mr. Mohammed failed to be convicted at trial, such an event, Mr. Mohammed would revert to the status he has today, and he would, we would all be back to square one with our resident enemy combatant. By any definition, other than Mr. Holder's, this makes the civilian trial a multi-million dollar charade. We should go back to square one. Thousands of 
He tells us we should not cower before the enemy. We cower only when we grant our enemy constitutional rights to demonstrate in Mr. Holder's words that we will enable every forum possible to hold the, count of the terrorists accountable for their actions. Mr. Holder tells us not to be scared. Indeed, it takes a brave person to make a difficult decision. It takes a braver person to recognize and to change a wrong decision. Before 